scripture lesson for this morning is coming from Genesis 1, verses 14 through 19. Hear now the word of the Lord. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This has been a crazy week, but the good news is that I had a deep thought. I used to have them daily. I take them when I can get them now. And this is the deep thought. God could have created the weekend. God could have freed up an extra day of rest during creation because day one and day four look an awful lot alike. Seems to me that God could have reduced some redundancy here. God could have worked smarter, not harder. God could have optimized and streamlined the days of creation so that it wouldn't take so long so that each day would have been just a little more distinct. You remember that on day one, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, calling the light day and the darkness night. And as I considered day four, I I was a bit dumbfounded and confused because once again, it seems as if God is separating the day from the night, just as God did on the first day of creation. On day four, God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars, making a distinction between daylight and sunlight. God, on the fourth day of creation, created luminaries, light bearers. In other words, God created the sun and the moon and the stars, God created them on purpose, with a purpose. They were not made by mistake. They were not created by happenstance. They were not an afterthought. No, these luminaries had a purpose. They were created to mark the days. They were to be for signs and seasons, for days and for years. They were to rule the day and the night. They were to give light upon earth. They had a purpose. They fulfilled their purpose, and they were called good. They, the luminaries, were created to distinguish the day from the night. They, the luminaries, were to give light upon the earth. They, plural, the luminaries, all of them the sun and the moon and the stars. As I wrestled with our text for this morning, I became quite fond of day four. For on this day, God created luminaries for the darkness. God made provision for us in our darkest hours, 
Even at night, we have light bearers, the sun, the, the moon, and the stars. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God provides light in the daylight and in the darkness. Because the world that God created, the world that God loves so much can seem real dark sometimes. I'm reminded of something that I read in Anne Labatt's book entitled Hallelujah Anyway, Rediscovering Mercy. In it, she recounts the story of Lynn Twist, an activist for global hunger causes. Twist tells the story of a village in Senegal where the water supplies were almost gone. Its wells were running dry. This was a desert land where almost nothing grew but baobab trees. So, Lynn Twist and the Hunger Project traveled through the hundreds of miles of orange sand, sand that choked them and stung their eyes. And as they got closer, they could hear the village long before they saw it. For the men were drumming. The women and the children were vibrant and in bright attire dancing. And when their guest of honor arrived, the men in the village sat in a circle with the Hunger Project people. And the women sat in the circle behind them, close enough to hear. The men were grateful that the Hunger Project people had come there to help them locate new sources of water or to help relocate them to a land that was less harsh a land with wells that weren't about to dry up. In this village, Anne Lamont wrote, when people sat together with gratitude, relief, flies, starvation, truth-telling, hope, listening, a vision, and even the grumbling, they reached a new stratum. As she sat with the villagers, Twist noticed that the women were eager to talk and requested permission to speak to them. She learned that the women had a vision that there was an underground lake beneath the orange sand that choked them and stung their eyes. The men, however, wouldn't let them dig for it. They wanted the women to concentrate on weaving and cooking and farming and caring for their children. The men didn't want to waste their time and their energy on mere visions. The Hunger Project people, however, believed the visions of the women. They persuaded the leaders of the community to let the women dig for water. So the women began to dig with their hands and with small shovels while singing and taking care of each other's children. They dug while attending to their other responsibilities of weaving and cooking and farming. And after a while, the men caught hold to the vision. They started to help watch their children as the women continued to dig. They dug deeper and deeper for a full year until they found an underground lake, just like one that they saw in their visions. Because of the collective vision of the women, the village now have a well and water system with storage facilities and irrigation for their families and for 16 neighboring villages. They now have crops and boutique industries and chicken farming and a passion for literacy and telling their stories. In the midst of their scary situation, in their darkest hour, I'm so glad that luminaries, bear, bearers of light, were present. And Lamont called them by other names, mercy and grace. 
She wrote the mercy of the baobab trees giving shade, the hydrating grace of their new lake, their ancient lake there all along, the mercy of the men letting go of their rigid roles, the mercy of sweet water and song in the harsh desert, the mercy of the helpers, the grace of second winds. My dear friends, here in the United States, we know a thing or two about scary situations, about a community in crisis, about the dark hours of the night. My heart broke when I woke up from my Sunday nap to learn about the shooting at the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas. Last Sunday, as the community gathered to worship, a gunman entered their church, injuring 20 people and killing 27, including an unborn child. In the midst of their scary situation, in a community in crisis, in the darkest hours, luminaries, bearers of light, were present. Signs of mercy and grace like the survivors, the mercy of helpers, the hugs of community members, the outpouring of love for strangers. Luminaries were present, like the light of the candles at the evening vigil, the sweet song of hymns and prayer, the grace of second winds, and the presence of God who grieves over the world that God created, the world that God loves so much. My dear brothers and sisters, it's a dark night when swastikas, SS symbols, a German iron cross, a hammer and sickle are drawn on a piece of paper in the sanctuary. As Pastor Andy said, such symbols have no place in this church nor anywhere in our community and in our lives. In the midst of such darkness, I thank God that on the fourth day, God created luminaries to rule both the day and the night. That God made provision for us in the form of light bearers, signs of mercy and grace, like the courage and the willingness to respond the proclamation of love, the sweet song of prayer, the hydrating grace of God who is with us and for us and here all along. But let's be real. It's not always easy to see the luminaries in the dark. It's not always easy to find hope when all seems lost. It's not always easy to trust that God has good plans for us when our present reality is choking us and stinging our eyes. It's not always easy to say hallelujah anyway in the midst of the darkness, in the face of despair. It's not always easy to hold fast to a vision that people so freely doubt and dismiss. It's not always easy to dance to the beat of the drum when our future is uncertain and our lives are at risk. It's not always easy to sit together with gratitude and grief, truth-telling, hope, listening, a vision, and even the grumbling in order to rise and to reach a new stratum. Let's be real. It's not always easy to see the lesser light in the mist of the darkness. But when we can't seem to find a glimmer of light, God invites us to be luminaries, to shine like the moon and the stars at night, to illuminate the darkness, to dispel hate with the light of God's love. When we can't seem to find a glimmer of light in the darkness, God invites us to be the light that we need to see, to be the church, 
to offer grace, to rediscover mercy, to somehow say hallelujah any way. When we can't seem to find a glimmer of light, God invites us to drum to the beat of justice and to dance to a song of truth and to hold fast to God's vision of healing and wholeness and hope. When we can't seem to find a glimmer of light in the world, God invites us to dig just a little bit deeper until we finally find some sweet relief to watch over all of God's children while we work to create a world of light and love, a world of justice and peace. My dear friends, we are able to be luminaries because of the word of God. For don't you know that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and life was the light to all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Jesus, let his light shine in the dark hours of the night, when all seemed lost, when his vision was doubted and dismissed, when he struggled to accept his father's will, when hate stung his eyes and literally choked him to death. My dear brothers and sisters, we are able to be light bearers because Jesus offered us both light and life, mercy and grace, the power to proclaim a message of love to the symbols of hate and the courage to take the time and the energy to discover God's vision. All all in the name and the authority of the original luminary who was present in the beginning and who was there all along. Hallelujah and amen. Won't you pray with me? Oh God, let your light shine for us and in us and through us that the world that you created, the world that you love so dearly, might find healing and wholeness and hope. It's in the name of the light of the world that we pray. Amen.